Good morning, and thank you so much for being here today on this lovely Thursday morning, the week before the election. I'm so excited because back in, was it July? Yeah. Right. July, that um, we were down at the courthouse. I had all of the same people in front of me on the courthouse steps asking me about uh, Mr. Hubbard's charges and did I believe in him and did I believe that he would still be our candidate and did I believe that he was innocent. And I did say that I did believe, at the time I do believe, I did believe in Mr. Hubbard. I did believe that he would be found um, not guilty of the charges because I knew the history. And because not only did I have to trust Mr. Hubbard's words, but I have friends like Jackie here who've known him since high school or maybe before. Um, who can who is a woman obviously who can vouch for his treatment of women and to, to know that those charges were utterly false and that he would never have done anything like he was charged regardless of the previous um, charges that were also dismissed so yesterday morning uh, when mr hubbard went to court the the woman who had uh, filed the charges was a no-show again so this has been a history, a, a history, a pattern that she's developed, that she gets mad and she files charges and then she doesn't show. So it's really unfortunate that we have had now a, a, a campaign that was hijacked by this horrible press coverage. So I am in these false charges and I'm, I am coming to you today to make sure that everyone knows that he was he is not guilty. He is not guilty. And um, and that I just want to use this as an opportunity to bring to the attention of other people in other communities who don't deal with this kind of thing, how atrocious this is, that this is that people can continue to do this to somebody. I mean, Mr. Hubbard, so I, I'm just gonna say I have three sons, and I always tell my sons be very careful because the guy is always at fault. Um, so boys in the room. Uh, <laughs> yes, so but Amen. He would, he, <laughs> and men, my husband says. So, but I just want to point out that 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 is true, and guys have to certainly protect themselves. Men do, but women need to be held accountable for doing things like this as well. I mean, as a woman, I cannot, I cannot uh, fathom filing charges against someone just because right. I'm mad at them. Absolutely. That is so utterly ridiculous. Right. It's a waste of the court's time, the court's resources, the LPD's resources. It's a waste of our time. His, it's been a waste of his time, his energy, his money. And now what does he do for restitution for that? He, for a misdemeanor charge, was given an ankle monitor that he had to pay mm. monthly for. Yeah. And who, when that money could have been going towards his campaign, the time and effort he has spent in checking in and being the limitations that have been put on him and his ability to campaign, the the full time monitoring of his of him, it is absolutely, utterly, and just incomprehensible to me as a woman uh, that this this has happened, and as a human being that this has happened. So I I don't think that what we need to do. I know that last year Delegate Walker had a. Um, a bill passed, what's it called? The, the, the swatting, swatting bill swatting passed bill. about they can, about calling the police to a scene when it's a false charge. I think we need to equally do something. We need to work with our legislators to do something to stop this kind of nonsense. Right. Because this man, his credibility was um, questioned. Uh, his time and money and energy and it was put into this false flag is what it was. So we need to come up with a solution so this doesn't continue to happen. And I think that it's an opportunity for those of us who don't experience this kind of thing to understand that sometimes when we are in different communities, this is the kind of retaliation that men face and that it is not okay. And that these are the kinds of things that Mr. Hubbard is working to correct in his ward. And right. so now it's time for us to come to the table, realize that this was utterly false and it, and, and it is a pattern of behavior from the same woman and let's focus on Tuesday and let's focus on why we need to vote for Mr. Hubbard. So what I wanna say about that is Mr. Hubbard is running to change, to change War Two, and um, we hear from the other side, well, that his the incumbent, his opponent, you know, was on the school board and uh, for eight years or however many years and that he's been on city council for eight years well I'm a businesswoman and I'm a, I'm a businesswoman and as a businesswoman 
Um, I can hire somebody, but hiring them and having them show up for work and their outcomes and their job performance are two different things. So I don't know any other job that um, we continue to have a failing, where people continue to have a failing record and continue to stay employed, right. other than politics. We see that happening in politics all over. You can have a failing record and you want us to keep voting you in. So I believe that everything is based on the cornerstone of education in our, in our society. So in Lynchburg, we have a problem in the last, since um, the incumbent has been in office, we have not had, um, we've had, what's the record? What is the, what is the job performance? We've had businesses closed down. War two is a ghost <clears throat> town as far as businesses are concerned. We have had um, a high crime and we have failing schools. And I believe that they all work together because when our children are not being educated, then they're not employable. And if they're not employable because they're not being educated, then that's when they're taken to the streets. They're hooking up with gangs. That's when our crime rises. And then when I sit down with the Business Alliance and I ask them about the developmental plans for Lynchburg City and why we, what is the plan and how, it, what is it like for them to try to recruit businesses to come to our area, the two things they look at are crime and schools. 